This is a warehouse floor. This is a forklift. These are people working in this facility. And this is our danger zone or our red zone. And this leads us to some questions. How can we trigger alerts when people are in red zones or indeed when they leave a red zone? And how can we track trends over time, monitoring congestion when there are multiple forklifts in a red zone, for example, or when there are multiple people within said zone? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm James, and we're going to be talking about detecting people in danger zones with vision AI. So the, the principle that we're going to be covering is called red zone monitoring. And it's all about identifying and building visual insights around objects within a designated red zone. And the red zone um, is often a place where heavy machinery is operated in manufacturing. So that may be where forklifts are moving from a facility, like the example I just shared. It could be where robust arms are in operation or indeed any other type of machinery where humans should not be in close proximity. And um, you can use vision AI and these computer vision principles to track objects entering, staying in and exiting red zones. And then objects can be anything you train the model to identify. So for our example today, we're going to be talking about forklifts and people, but you could extend that to say track if packages have fallen off a forklift in a red zone, where if there's this constant flow of traffic that you expect off forklifts, it would be essential for everyone to be notified when packages have fallen off so that they can be picked up by somebody before normal operations continue. So this again is the example we're going to be looking through of this danger zone in our production facility. We're going to be tracking the forklift, we'll have a designated zone, and then we'll have people that we will ensure uh, or track when they're in that zone. We'll be building all of this in Workflows. Workflows is our web-based application builder for Vision AI applications. Using workflows, building all of this logic around tracking objects in zones uh, can be done in a web-based interface. So here on the left, we've got these blocks, we've got an input running through a model, then we're getting an output. And we can combine multiple blocks together and build complex multi-stage applications. We can crop predictions, we can filter predictions, add offsets, uh, run multiple models, do time in zone tracking and more. So for this example, we're going to be talking about zone tracking. Before I kind of walk through an example and show on a video, the kind of principles that we're going to be using, the pieces of the puzzle are as follows. Firstly, we have an object action model. This can be any model that you've trained on or uploaded to RoboFlow. We then use an object tracking algorithm. In this case, we'll be using Byte Tracker. But then we use time and zone, uh, which is going to, in the background, uh, and for how long each founding box has spent in a zone. And then finally, we're going to visualize the results. Of note, a bike tracker is, um, is a great object tracking algorithm, but we're hoping it's only the beginning. We have an open source project in the works that's going to help us vastly extend our tracking repertoire for objects, which will be great for even more advanced manufacturing use cases. And one note. For the example that we're walking through, you will need a camera of a high shutter speed for accurate tracking. The reason is if the frames per second is low, it's harder for the tracking algorithm to locate objects between frames. And so with that in mind, let's walk through a demo and workflows. If you go to roboflow.com slash red dash zone dash workflow, you'll be able to see a version of the workflow that I'll be talking through. You can also hit the fork button to copy that into your workspace. And if you do that, you can customize it, change it, set your own zones, play around, and generally experiment. With that in mind, I'm going to head over to Workflows here. I've got a workflow that's running on my Mac right now. It's running on local hosts. You can also configure your workflows to run with our hosted API on GPU dedicated deployments, among other things. But the same code that is running on my Mac can also run on an NVIDIA Jetson, on a T4 or L4s and indeed CPU-based devices as well. So we kind of love Inference, which is our Inference server, doing all this background work, adapting to the hardware and giving you the best performance possible. So while we do all that engineering in the back, we also have this user interface where we can build our workflow. So our workflow, let's run it and then talk through how it works. So if we go to test, we can upload a video frame or a video and run our workflow. I did one earlier, and this is one frame from the video that we'll be working with. And here we've got forklifts, we've got people, 
And we also have kind of this zone that we will track in, which isn't visible here. This is just an input image. If we go to visual, this is the response from our workflow. We have bounding boxes around all of the objects. So forklift here in this light purple has its own class and the people do too. This time in zone is not applicable because we're running on a single image frame. When we have a video, this is going to have a second increment count. And of note, this person is not tracked up here because they're not in the red zone. Next, we are using bike track, which allows us to track objects between frames. This is taking in our model predictions. And then really where the magic is happening is this time and zone block. Using this time and zone block, we can take in our track detections that bike tracker is sending back and then monitor for how long they're in the zone. Now, workflow has an interactive, what we call polygon zone editor which lets you designate one zone or indeed multiple zones if you use this block multiple times. So if I hit that kind of edit button here, we can see this is the zone that I drew earlier, this pink barrier surrounding, and this is going to be our red zone, our danger zone in which we track objects. And then finally, we're doing a couple different visualizations. Finding box shows the boxes, polygon zone shows that zone that we just drew. And then finally labels to show the time in zone. It's the first one here. We show the time in zone value. And then also the second one, the class, so that we know both the type of object that's been identified and for how long it's been in the space. Now we've built this workflow in workflows, but the next question is like, how do we use it? How do we get it running on our hardware? For that, if we hit deploy, you're going to get a code snippet with everything you need in order to run your workflow. So this will come pre-filled with your workflow ID, your API key, and everything you need. Of note, you will need to change this output image to be whatever the output is from your workflow. With that in mind, I'm going to kind of head over to the code here. So it's the same code snippet. I changed the name to label visualization, and I'm going to run this code snippet. This will take a second while our workflows demo to our machine. Our model weights are cached on our machine. And then very quickly, we will start to see results. And here you can see it's tracking that for about three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. When a new person enters the zone, it's got its own counter. When they leave, the counter goes away. And so now that we have this tracking, again, person coming in, we're able to do what we want. We can say, okay, if there are multiple people in the zone, trigger an alert. Or if there's a person and a forklift in the zone, log that to a safety record and keep track of when that, when that same kind of correlation of events happens. Workflows has many blocks that can assist with building, with building that kind of logic. And just going back over is the screen cap I took off the tracking. Where there we've got the forklift, we've got the people. And of course we could extend this to track boxes. And if the box doesn't overlap with the forklift, then trigger an alert. Really, it's up to you. Uh, in terms of how the zone identification works, we have that drawn in time in, in our time in zone block. And then there's kind of an overlap threshold algorithm, which is being run in order to determine whether or not an object is mostly, or the majority of it is within that zone. And then we can change this zone, of course, if we want. And the neat thing about workflows is everything is live. So if we make any changes here, then we hit save and we rerun our workflow, we're going to see those. I'm going back to our slides, i share here. The next step is integration. So we have the system that can identify unique objects in the manufacturing facilities on a warehouse floor. We have the ability to track objects and also constrain our logic to only relate to objects within a red zone, within a danger zone. And the next step is what insights can we get from that? So you can take your camera. In this case, it was working off a local video, but it could be an RTSP stream, a USB webcam that's connected to wherever your compute is. So your compute could be an NVIDIA Jackson Orin, it could be a central server where all your webcam, where all your RTSP enabled IP cameras are uh, rooted into, or wherever you have your compute. Then you have this kind of brain in the middle, your workflow that runs your models, then all the logic steps you've built, then an action at the end. So in this example, it was just showing the results of our system to give us that visual intuition of, okay, our tracking is working. But realistically, you would start adding more integrations into your systems. So Workflows supports many of those, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but ultimately, with Workflows, you 
can build your logic right inside. So tell log to a record when there are more than two people in a red zone. Log to a record when there is a person in a forklift in a red zone. Notify a foreman if there are several people in a red zone. Or notify a forklift operator if a box has been found in a red zone that is not currently on a moving forklift. And then another neat thing we can do is take images from our live feed and bring them back into RoboFlow using the predictions from the model that we trained to build this what we call active learning uh, loop, which allows us to constantly improve our systems over time. If we constantly gather images from our system and detections too, save those back into RoboFlow, then those can be manually reviewed to make sure the, the detections are correct, maybe make changes to ensure your bounding boxes are tight. And then with that said, you can retrain a model. Then in workflows, just by changing that workflow ID, you can train a new model version. And of note, we also have integrations with MQTT, OPC UA, and kind of other protocols with which may be familiar in industrial environments. So yeah, here's just a selection of those integrations. So that kind of active learning workflow is what we call our data set upload block. You can also send data to webhooks, CSV, a local file. You can aggregate data. You can send notifications uh, by like email or SMS, or indeed down here in the bottom right, what we've got is our OPC UA block, which is exclusively for our enterprise customers, as well as our MQTT block, which allows you to send that data to another system. So in summary, we spoke about what red zone monitoring is, how to define polygon zones and RoboFlow workflows, how to track the amount of time an object spent in the zone, and then also how to run a workflow with a deploy snippet in our application. Red zone, the same principles that we use for red zone monitoring apply to any zone monitoring scenario you have. So one example that we've seen uh, for, would be measuring if an object spends too much time on the assembly line. Like let's say you've got many packages moving and there's a package that's been there for a long time and then other packages start to back up. You're able to say, okay, this has been here for five seconds. It should have already flowed through what's going on here. Then you can send an operator to go and monitor that scenario. We see a lot of these use cases where there's a consistent problem that has been identified that needs kind of intervention, but the cadence on which it happens is unclear. And so with Vision AI, we're able to derive those insights, send the insights to the operators and build the logic that we need to ensure they have the information to keep things running smoothly. Now, we do also have a blog post to accompany this, blog.roomflow.com. The link is on the screen now, where I walk through, again, step-by-step step this workflow, which is great if you need a reference manual as you're getting started. And again, roboflow.com slash red dash zone dash workflow will take you to the same workflow through which we've spoken today. And with that said, thank you very much. And you can join us next time at roboflow.com slash webinar.